Steve, so uh, when you met me, we were deciding what the frontline therapy is going to be for you. So there was a lot of option because, you know, when I saw you, you came on a wheelchair and, and I wondered, wait a minute, his quality of life is not going to be good. He's starting out being on a wheelchair. He's hardly able to get up and get onto the examination table. And, and I wanted to know how were you before you got this diagnosis and you had said to me that you were very active. And, uh, you know, we were talking about clinical trials so what was that which changed and how did we, did you accept some of the recommendation? When I first sat down with you, I, um, I asked you what the options were and um, you told me all the options, but the one that uh, made sense to me is the one that you were really keen on. So I could tell just by the uplift in your voice, believe it or not, that you were pretty excited about the Cabo. And uh, I opted for that because you seemed so positive in the trials that had come forth. So right away I was leaning to that before we even discussed, you know, I mean, finalized everything. And uh, that's why I asked you about all the different drugs and I was interested in the immuno but you kept on going back to the clinical trials on the cable, which is why I knew you were so positive of um, how it had come through the clinicals. Wow. So, so that's why I opted for that one. Yeah. So when Steve presented to me, he had really aggressive disease. His disease was spreading into the lung as well as the liver and the retroperitoneal region. So my first concern is if I'm going to give him immunotherapy, yeah, with an extensive disease, it's going to take some time uh, for immunotherapy to work. Immunotherapy is great as long as you don't have large volume metastatic disease and aggressive disease. And uh, so at that point in time, it was, uh, he presented to me in January, but somewhere late December, cabozantinib got approved. And one of the unique mechanism of cabozantinib was uh, it targets uh, VEGF, EXL and MET. So we had seen that cabozantinib had uh, a positive clinical trial result uh, when it was compared to sunitinib, and sunitinib was there for at least 10 long years as a first line standard of care. But many of the patients developed uh, activating resistant mutation with EXL and MET, which was going to be targeted by cabozantinib. So, and I said to him, I think uh, the way you're progressing, even after taking the kidney out, I think we need to use something which is going to give us an immediate response. So I decided that, uh, you know, with him as a partnership, that we need to start this pill, and, and, and he was on board with it. Yeah, it's, I, I'm the type of person that um, I'm into a lot of the newer style stuff it's really not new at all it's been around for tens of thousands of years but i was always into holistic um, i never went to the doctors never never had checkups i was incredibly healthy i was 265 pound bodybuilder weightlifter i did compete in powerlifting when i was younger and um i did yoga did a lot of ice skating roller skating all the sports with my son and um I, when I, you know, when I went to you, I couldn't even move. It was amazing. And I just, uh, I knew that the newer stuff that was coming out was a, a, a more viable and a better option for me. I mean, like I say, I, I always went to holistic healers. I did uh, massage therapies. I've always been in the chiropractor's office. I, I still go every six weeks. Uh, I have been since the 70s. And... Uh, I was always afraid of the hospitals, and here they were, they just saved my life. But, and, uh, but you know, when you spoke about the new research and everything, uh, uh, that, was, that was good. Uh, yeah, because at that point in time, uh, Steve needed something to give him an immediate response, and cabozantinib had just uh, uh, got the approval, an FDA approval, and uh, it had uh, uh, 
beaten basically sunnitinib, which was there for a long time. So you know that was um, that was only like two weeks after the operation I saw you. Yes. And then what happened five weeks later? I got rushed to the hospital. The uh, the cancer went rabid, and it had spread to the outside of my pancreas, yes. back into the liver, uh, to my other kidney. Right, I remember um, that. Again, I you know I wasn't scared. I just all I I did say please stop the pain because um, the cancer on the um, the pancreas was incredibly painful, brought me to my knees. It was so painful that um, I just kept on throwing up. It was it just, I'd never been in so much pain. And he was admitted in the hospital, and my colleague who was taking care of him on the inpatient service, and he called me and he said, what do you want to do with him? I said, he's got the pill in his, uh, at his place yep. uh, at home. Tell him to start now because I do not know what can we expect, but at least we can start the treatment and see whether he's going to respond or not. Oh, yeah. He came to me within, a, I swear, a few minutes after that phone call, I bet, because they came in uh, the next morning, and he said, you have to go home right now and start the, your medication, yeah. which was surprising me because I was, I mean, I was in so much pain when I got there. So they put me on painkillers and uh, helped relieve that pain. And uh, they sent me home Saturday, started, started that day. Yeah. You know, always there is a question whether, you know, patients uh, should be a partner or uh, in, in deciding what the treatment options are and whether they can be involved in their care. And, and, I, and I said, you know, you know, I want you to be a partner in this decision-making process and uh, because the data keeps on changing, you know, better data comes by. Yep. But I wanted you to be informed. I wanted to be very transparent with you. And, and I think that was an important part in this decision-making process. What is your thinking about, you know, uh, this shared decision-making? Well, I had a, my father died of cancer, lymphoma cancer, different, of course, but... Um, I watched the treatment he had, and he just kept wilting away, and he just died. I mean, he just it looked like he was dying from day one. And me, on the other hand, I, I, I didn't want to do that. I just didn't want to go the old route. I just didn't think it was a good option for me. And uh, I could tell from your positivity, and that was that's key for me too because I'm very positive, but I could tell just by the way you were talking that it was something that was on the front lines that was an option. And I could tell, and I knew, and I was excited.